Are some silver stackers scared to stack silver today? Are you scared to buy it because the price is so volatile? I mean, if you take a look at Friday, we had a range of over $2 between the high and the low on that day, closing it at almost $30 an ounce and closing the day out at just around 28. And I totally get how that volatility could scare some people off. Let me introduce you to Mr. 2450. This is one of my kilo silver bars from Johnson Matthew out of my deep stack. I show these off on the camera every once in a while, but I have it here for a reason. Mr. 2450 is a kilo, which is 32.15 ounces of silver. If someone were to buy a kilo of silver just like this, and they bought it at the peak on Friday and didn't wait just a couple of hours, the value difference, how much you paid, would have been a difference of $64. That's right, about $64 between buying it at say noon and waiting until four o'clock. That kind of volatility can be quite scary and many people decide to wait to buy silver during very, very high volatility. And I even talked about it in a video I did on Friday where I brought up how that volatility and how silver approaching 30, it absolutely could see a reverse course and go back down. That doesn't mean I'm telling people not to buy silver. I then showed a video on Monday where I specifically went out to coin shops and I bought some silver, some of which I am adding to my deep stack, like this one right here. If you guys wanna see that video, I'll put a link to it down below. But again, I get the nervousness about that volatility and why people may want to wait. So what I wanna to do today is be joined by a coin dealer who is gonna tell us what it's like in his shop and what his customers are doing. Are they waiting? Are they still buying? Are they selling to them? Or maybe they don't even wanna sell because they think it might go up even further. That is, if someone wanted to sell their silver, you know, uh, most people stacking right now don't wanna sell. And in my opinion, if you're buying silver to just turn around and sell it for a profit, maybe you shouldn't be anyway. But anyway, let's be joined by Keith. I'm gonna ask him straight out. Keith, are customers in your shop afraid of buying silver? And if so, why? Another year, another monster box of silver. For 2024, SD Bullion is giving away a full monster box of their one ounce silver Tree of Life coins. You can enter this giveaway all year, but I suggest that you do it now by going to sdbullion.com forward slash sweepstakes and make sure you enter today. Thank you to SD Bullion for sponsoring my channel. Keith, I just want to get right into it. I want to ask you, you had said earlier when we were talking on the phone that your customers are scared to buy silver, or at least that's how you feel it is. Can you explain why they are and then why they might actually be afraid to buy silver right now in this market? Well, the market's been pretty volatile lately. You've seen silver um, on Friday. Silver had a two, about a $2 spread from the high to the low throughout the day and then ended, ended up closing out lower than it started. Uh, and Monday, it went up again. The validity in the silver pricing is starting to scare people. They don't know what's going on. You've got the equities markets going down. Silver starts to go up and then it eases back. And I think that's scaring a lot of people away. They're not sure. They're not sure what the market's going to do. So, I mean, I get that because like you had said, Friday's a really good example, which we'll kind of touch on. I mean, silver was closing in on $30 an ounce and then ended up closing at barely above 28 so I can imagine, you know, a customer coming in might be a little worried about buying silver and then it dropping $2, you know, that day. Have you had anyone specifically say anything about that or talk about the spot price and why they're worried about buying in the shop? Well, Friday, for example, we had that $2 spread uh, high to low. They had sat there and they came in and were like, oh, I'm not going to buy silver today. I'm going to wait and see what happens. And I've been getting a lot of that from a lot of different people. Gotcha. Now, what about sellers? Are people bringing in silver to sell? Or are they afraid to sell it because they're afraid it to go up? Again, with the silver validity of a $2 spread from high to low on Friday, people are wanting to hold on to it to see what happens. So they're not buying or selling. So they, they are still buying and they are still selling. But there's been at least, uh, if I had to say selling, there's been about a 30% decrease for me selling it and buying. Uh, they're only selling me about half as much as they normally do. Gotcha. So people are waiting on both ends because they don't want to sell in case it goes up, but they don't want to buy in case it goes down. So the people that are coming in and buying, are they buying like larger quantities, smaller quantities? And what are they focusing on? Are they buying like the higher premium silver, like Eagles, or are they sticking to the lower premium, like rounds and 10 ounce bars, things like that? Well, it's kind of a mix because it's kind of, like I said, slowed down all over the board. Uh, people are still, they're picking up some 90%. 
They have shied away a little bit of the one ounce rounds. I've noticed an uptick, however, in 10 ounce bars. Okay. Because we do sell those 50 cents cheaper. And with the validity, people tend to want to buy cheap as they can. I get that. Yeah. I mean, generally for your big, the big part of your stack, you want to get close to spot. I talk about that all the time. Um, you know, outside of collectible pieces here and there, mostly you want to buy that cheap stuff. Uh, so speaking on to that, Silver Eagle premiums have been moving back up again. Have people noticed that? And if noticing it, if they have noticed it, have they said anything to you? Uh, well, I don't think they, we don't move a lot of the Silver Eagles. So I don't think they're really noticing that that much. I mean, I'll sell, you know, a few a day here and there. Sometimes I might sell a roll, but as far as a bigger shop's concerned, they, they would be a better person to ask for something on the Silver Eagles. I'm more of just a, I guess you could say the guy that sells the less expensive silver when they, for the walk-ups. Got it. So are you uh, are you paying more for Silver Eagles now that the premiums are going up, or are you just holding off? Uh, I still got some Silver Eagles left, and I'm kind of, I guess you could say I'm not listening to my own advice, but I do have so many of them that I can't afford to wait and see. That's fair. Now, what about you buying Silver Eagles from you know the wholesalers you deal with? Have those numbers went up quite a bit, and are there delays? Because I've heard both of those things from other dealers. I've seen a 25 to 50 cent uptick over the past couple of weeks. Yeah, so I, I would say they're going up. And are there delays if you have to order them right now? I haven't seen any delays. But again, you know we're not open on Monday or Tuesday, so I don't know. There could be something that went on today or yesterday. No, that's fair. Well, this is something that I'd heard, you know, going back to last week. So unless something changed. I didn't, I didn't notice anything last week. That's fair. Place. So let's say this is not telling people if they should or should not buy silver, but let's say someone were to want to buy silver today. If they walked into your shop, what would you recommend them buy? Like we're, you're not trying to convince them to buy silver. They've already made that decision. But what type of silver would you lead them towards? I would lean them more towards uh, the 90% and the one ounce rounds. Even though the 10 ounce bars, you can save money on per ounce. They're also, you got to look at the point. If silver goes extremely high, that means that someone's going to have to have more money to buy a 10 ounce bar versus a one ounce round. So I try to say, hey, you know, this might be better for the long term. However, you can get this 10 ounce bar a little cheaper. And when I do that, they still want to grab the 10 ounce bar. Now you said 90% as well. Why 90%? Because it breaks down the fractional ounce. You have to be cautious. I mean, I'm not saying silver is going to go through the roof or anything, but you have to be cautious just in case it does get extremely high. You need to be able to break that one ounce silver round down. And 90% is a much better alternative than pure fractional rounds. So let me ask you a hard question here. What right now, if someone were to bring you 90% and sell it to you, are you paying anywhere close to spot for it? Uh, I don't know where spot is, but uh, Saturday I paid 20 times face. Okay, so that's got to be somewhat close. That's that's really not too far off. Um, actually, I can do the math. Yeah, do the math. Let's see what it is. Let Let's everybody see. know. All right, so I pulled up the calculator on the screen. We have 28.34, so times 0.715. That right now puts it at 2026. 20, That's really not too bad, actually. That's really close to spot. I've yeah. seen, the reason I ask is I've seen shops offering quite a bit farther back of spot, like in the 19s or even the 18s. And I'm talking to ones that were offering good. Obviously, when I did my coin shop call video a few weeks back, where I tried to sell the 90%, we had the crazy person at 12 and some of the 15s. I think 20 is pretty good. Are you buying a lot of it at that number? I'm, people aren't selling that much. I'm just buying what I can buy. Uh, however, having said that, you said Mel was a little over like 2036 or whatever it was you said. 2026. But spot on Saturday was right at maybe a little bit lower than it is now. Okay. That's a good so point. It was probably $28 roughly. Okay. I was figuring. Yeah, that's probably about right. I'd, I'd have to check, but still that's, that's really close. That's better than what I've heard, you know, out of most of my coin shop call videos. What about rounds? When someone brings you rounds right now, what are you paying across the counter? Uh, about 50 cents back right now, because I do have a lot of those. The demand isn't as great as I would like to be. However, you know, I have in the past paid as much as, well, when it was crazy, I was paying like five, six bucks over. But normally I'm like 50 cents to a dollar over. But the problem you're facing is now you're getting more sellers and buyers. What you're getting now is a supply and demand crunch. You're getting too much supply without the demand. 
Right. And it's basically an inequity between supply and demand. I get it. So what will, what do you think will cause, cause you've been through this, you've been through market swings. You were, you were a dealer in 2011 when it, you know, came to almost $50 an ounce and it plunged back down. I mean, what, what catalyst needs to be there for people to really, you know, start to move back into it? Because if people are scared from buying silver right now, what, needs to happen for them not to be what happened in 2011 that kept people buying going all the way up to fifty dollars an ounce i guess you could say the fomo kept them by it because it in 2011 i don't understand why it went up so high because it was the i guess you could say the analytics just were not there in my opinion there was no reason for it to go up that high because everything was inexpensive Right now, with the raise, rise of inflation, yeah, I could see it going up higher now than it did in 2011, but we're not getting there. So what you're saying is that today there's a reason for it to hit 50 and it's not. Back then there was not a reason for it to hit 50, but it did. Yes, low inflation in 2011, low cost of consumer goods. Today, high inflation, high cost of consumer goods should equal a higher silver price but for some reason, it's just not hitting it. People are unsure. Yeah, not to mention instability, you know, on the world stage, for sure, there's a lot going on that- A lot of geopolitical concerns are here now that were not present in 2011. No doubt, and for sure, there's also a bigger threat to the US dollar today than there was in 2011. I mean, we've never had a debt anywhere close to what we're seeing these days. So I think there's, I think you're right. I think it's, you know, as much as I don't have a crystal ball and I try not predict the price of silver, and I never will, I'm not going to tell you what it, silver could go down to $10 or more. I don't know. But it is it is crazy to think about what you just said. Back in 2011, there was no reason for it to do what it did. But, you know, this year, um, there's a thousand reasons and it's not there yet. So I do wonder, I do wonder what the catalyst would be to cause it to go there. And I really do, I want to dig farther into 2011 because maybe there's something, is there anything I'm missing? I mean, was there anything going on in 2011 that may have caused this that you're aware of? Well, what was happening in 2011 is what's not happening now. Uh, but before I start say, saying that, I want to say something else. The price in 2011 versus the price today, it just doesn't make sense. And the reason why that is, what was happening in 2011 was you had the interest rates getting lower, if not already down to near 0%. And the feds now, they keep talking about the interest rates, but they're not lowering them. I think, and this is just my opinion, I'm not a financial advisor, so please seek one if you want some help. I think that if the feds would start lowering the interest rates on borrowed money, I think it could be a great catalyst for silver value to increase. Yeah, but I doubt the Fed's going to do that. They were talking about doing that, and then I think they're going to put the brakes on it now that we've actually seen the CPI numbers go up, not down. Well, part of the problem you're having is the ser consumer services sector, you know, like price of home insurance, medical insurance, you know, cable and stuff like that. Those prices just keep going up. Yeah, they're not lowering them down which is keeping inflation on a, I guess you could say, rampant course. Right, for sure. Okay, well, uh, very interesting. A lot of things to think about. Um, guys, Keith has his own YouTube channel, Coin Crew. I'll put a link for it down below if you guys want to see more videos from him. And we'll try and have him on in the future as well to answer some more questions. Keith, thanks for joining me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank so Keith kind of echoed what the beginning of this video was for sure, but you know, he did give us something to think about. You know, 2011 is really, it's really compelling to think about that in 2011, silver hit almost $50 an ounce. And according to Keith, for no real reason, whereas today I could name 10 reasons right off the top of my head and, you know, keep going if I really put some thought into it, you know, between geopolitical issues and rampant inflation and the cost of living and everything else going up, this metal that's supposed to be what we call a hedge against inflation certainly is not showing itself to be that today, is it? No, it is definitely not. So I, you know, I personally think that eventually silver will show itself and reveal its true value. Is that this current time of, you know, silver going up? I have no idea. I don't have a crystal ball.
but I truly believe in silver, which is why I am continuing to stack it. I would love to know what you are doing though. Are you buying silver right now or are you waiting to see what happens and if silver is going to go back down before you continue to add to your stack? Let me know with a comment down below, guys. Again, I would love to hear your thoughts, so leave that down there. Do me a favor, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet, I really appreciate it. And check out this video above where I secret shopped four local coin shops, one of which I bought this beautiful piece from right here. That's the next video you should watch. Other than that, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time.